I'm just going to do a quick run through of some of the materials that I use. I very often get asked uh, what I use and what um, I would suggest for people starting out with watercolour. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what I use and also some tips that what you might be able to use when you're starting out with watercolour painting. Uh, I find usually uh, what it is is that the higher quality materials are going to give you a better response. Uh, result but I know when you're trying something out for the first time that it can be quite hard to make that investment especially if you don't know uh, what you're, where you're going to go with it and the great thing about watercolour is that you can experiment a lot with different papers and paints especially ones that are not that high end so it's a really good place to start definitely there so I'm just going to switch the camera around and give you a bit of a view of some of the things I use and some suggestions I've got for starting out. Okay, so I thought I'd just give you a bit of an insight into the tools I work with. So normally when I'm starting a painting, I will start by using a pencil. I use a pacer as I really like the thinness of the lead and also find it quite easy to use. I also do have a large range of pencils um, that are also equally as good to use. I would suggest either a uh, probably starting with a HB as it's quite easy to erase and you don't get your pencil lines in your final painting. The next thing is the brushes. So I use quite a range of brushes. So for watercolour, the important thing to remember is that it is ideal to purchase actual watercolour brushes because they're going to help with the application of the paint better. Now the big rule with watercolour brushes is do not use them for any other type of paint. So acrylic and oil paint can seriously damage your brushes. So if you do are using watercolour, make sure you keep your watercolour brushes separate from your other brushes so they don't get mixed up. So I use mainly the little ones. Um, so because I do quite a lot of small detailed work, I find these ones most useful. But the bigger brushes also have their use. So these ones here I usually use for filling in large areas of paint. Uh, and they're good to apply more paint to the paper in one go. The, this one I actually use primarily, and this one here, to brush off the eraser marks when I am rubbing out my pencil lines. So I find these actually quite useful for that. I haven't used this one um, for paint yet, but uh, because of the big size of it, I don't think you'll get a very accurate application, but it's very good for, you know, brushing things off the piece of paper. This one here I actually use mostly for mixing paint. So because it's got a rounded tip, the tip isn't going to damage like on some of the thinner ones. So I use this to mix paint together so that then you can get different colours and also mixing water into the paint to get an even application. The small ones are a range, so they go from this one, which I think is a 1 on 10, which you can see has quite a square point. So I use this to fill in more areas and then I use these ones for the finer work. So this is a 510 and a 1010 and this one here is the smallest one I have. So I think this is a, I'm not sure. I'll see if I can figure it out and link it below. So this one I use, which is a really, really fine end. I use that a lot for highlights and individual lines over the top of paintings. So I don't actually go and colour per se with this one, it is just for detail work. So in addition to that, I also occasionally do use one of these, which has water in the pen. So I find that sometimes this is good because it helps the flow of the water, but it does really depend on what you're using it for. I found that for small detailed work, this isn't as accurate. So I usually use it much as I would some of my bigger pens for filling in large space. Uh, in terms of pens, I also use fine liners. So again, I do use the smaller sizes. So this is a 0.1 and a 0 0.05. Uh, these I use for small details or to go over the top of something. So I use the small detail pens a lot for eyes and small areas of black as well. In addition to that, I also have a range of other random things that I like to keep 
in my um, well, pencil jar. So this one I have here is actually kind of a cool uh, pacer that I got the um, pacer leads from Officeworks and it is red. So it is a coloured pencil, uh, but I use it sometimes to sketch out and then go over the top in uh, regular pencil so that you can see where you've gone. So it's almost like a drafting pencil. So you can start at the beginning with something really rough and then outline it. I also have a range of rulers. I tend to buy metal rulers because they're very good if you're cutting the paper as well. So this is the smallest one. I have a 30 centimetre and a 60 centimetre as well. Then I also have this, which I got custom made from a lady who makes ceramics. And I use this to put my brushes on when I'm painting. It's not essential. Uh, previously, I used to use just random things to put my brushes on, like uh, bowls or just keeping even a little piece of... Um, paper folded up just to keep it off the table so it's not getting watercolour paint on the table. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick overview of the palettes I use. So basically a palette is something that you put your paint on and then you can use the paint from that palette. I This is the main one that I use. I got it about a year and a half ago um, and I've used it a lot. The way the colours are set up is they correlate to my swatches so that I can match what colour it is because sometimes the colour of the paint looks different to the actual end colour it will look like on the paper. I also hate wasting paint so a lot of the time I just leave my palette like this uh, and if I'm working with a certain colour scheme I'll create a new palette. Um, but usually I don't wash the palette off, I try and use it up before I add more paint or I move on to another palette so that um, the paint is maintained intact. So these are a few of the other palettes I use. So these ones are more if I'm using a certain colour scheme. Uh, so for example, pink, orange, green. Um, and then also certain colours that aren't in this big palette here. These ones are here. Now, if you're just starting out, um, a really good thing to use for palettes are jar lids. I actually use them a lot and also I do find that some for some of my other pieces, um, plates or sauces are very useful as well. I recently found an artist and one of her things was that she would do a month of painting and then keep her palette from that month and start a new one. And at the end she had 12 weeks worth of palettes which were really beautiful. So you can think of them also as a sense of like a piece of art in itself. Now, the important thing about a palette, which I'll go into more detail later, is that you need to have room to mix your paint with water. So by mixing the paint with water, it'll dilute the colour and it'll also make a more even coverage when you go to apply the paint to paper.